Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. Because Rana Balakrishna Aryan Basim Sarla Vandan Danish and everybody who is online for the Monday medicine with Dr. Murli. So today we start the class. Let us start with two to three areas which you need to remember with some mnemonics and an easy way to understand and easy to forget but easy to way to understand is required. So how to remember is important. So we will have a quick three to four uh, uh, review mnemonics. So very happy to see Tabish, Rizvi and many more 39 online students. Can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear, doctor? Everybody. Now, <clears throat> the first mnemonic and the first concept today we are going to discuss is the brainstem syndromes. Brainstem syndromes. <clears throat> yeah. You are given a clinical case and you are asked. Is it the midbrain? Is it the pons? Is it the medulla? Is it midline or is it lateral? Where is the stroke? Is the favorite question of the examiner in need to PG, AIMS, JIPMA, PGI, DNB, FMG, any exam that you go. So let us master how to remember. Can you give me the board? <coughs> how to remember? Uh, the brain stem strokes how to localize it for that you need to know the rule of four the rule of four so what is the meaning of rule of four there are four cranial nerves in each section how many sections you have doctor I am trying to make you easy to remember and reproduce in the exam on brain stem strokes how to localize the lesion based on the clinical presentation okay now doc you have a midbrain you have a pons then you have a medulla so there are four cranial nerves in each section that is midbrain pons and medulla and Cranial nerves that can be divided by that can divide that can divide evenly that can divide evenly into 12 12 they are all midline located midline located now tell me doctor what are the cranial nerves that you know forget about one two Forget about olfactory and optic nerve. I am talking from the cranial nerve 3. So you have cranial nerve 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now tell me. So what are we discussing is to start with today the different brain stem stroke syndromes. How are you going to localize? Is a very very important question. So, Sarla, Amrit, Akiredi, everybody, can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear? Yes. Now, what is the rule of four that you need to remember? There are four cranial nerves in each section. You have midbrain, palms, and medulla. So, the cranial nerves that can be divided into 12 they are all midline now tell me what are the cranial nerves cranial nerve 1 and 2 we are not anyway talking about them in the midbrain what is there 3 and 4 is there so 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 now tell me the big number that you need to remember is 12 now is the number 3 is the number 3 is capable of dividing 12? Yes. That is the reason it is 
midline. Number four, can it divide 12? Yes. Hence, it is also midline. Can the five can divide 12 evenly? No. That is the reason cranial nerve 5 is located in the brain stem laterally, laterally. Then cranial nerve 6, can 6 divide 12? Yes, that's the reason 6 is midline. Then 7, it cannot. That's the reason it is typically located laterally in the brain stem. Then can 8 divide 12? No, that's the reason 8 is also present laterally can the nine can divide no that's the reason nine is also located laterally ten is also present laterally and eleven is also present laterally in the brain stem only the twelfth cranial nerve once more is present in the midline so now tell me doctor what are all the cranial nerve nuclei which are located medially in the midline cranial nerve three Cranial nerve 4, cranial nerve 6, cranial nerve 12. These four cranial nerve nuclei are located medially. That is in the midline is what you have to remember. And the remaining cranial nerves are all located laterally. Give me the slide. <coughs> so, if you remember this rule, this rule of 4, you are the expert in the brainstem stroke syndromes. Now, once more let us summarize this pictorially. 3 and 4 medially, 6 is medial, 12 is medial, whereas 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, they are all laterally located is what you have to remember. Then what is the next important rule of rule of fours? There are four motor syndromes which are midline. Four motor syndromes which are midline. What are those four motor syndromes which are midline? M is medial longitudinal fasciculus. M is the motor tract of upper motor neuron that is corticospinal tract. M is the medial lemniscus which is carrying proprioception and vibration. M are the motor nuclei of the cranial nerve. These four motor syndromes are typically medial, midline. Whenever there is any, there is any ischemia or an infarction of the midline of the midbrain, midline of the pons, midline of the medulla, anytime midline is involved, then four yums you should remember. What are they? Yum is medial longitudinal fasciculus get affected. Yum is corticospinal tract get affected typically in the midline infarctions because the pyramidal tract will be traveling along the midline of the brainstem. Yum is the medial lemniscus. You are having cuneate tract and uh, gracile tract. They are called dorsal columns, right? They are bringing your proprioception, vibration, touch, uh, everything. No, they all come up to the from the spinal cord they ascend up and reach the lower medulla and in the lower medulla typically they decussate and travel when they decussate and travel up towards the lamus, they form what is called medial lemniscus is what you need to remember so um, <clears throat> let us look write it down on the whiteboard sometimes few concepts doctor a white paper lena a pen lena explain karna. When you are explaining that guy, the concept becomes strong for you. That is the only secret in medicine. Okay? So now, in the rule of four, what are the four motor syndromes that you are going to remember? Give me the board. <coughs> now, yeah, you are on the board. One, median longitudinal fasciculus is Midline. We are talking about midline. Then, motor tract. What is motor tract of UMN? Corticospinal tract. Corticospinal tract. This is also midline. If the midline of the medulla, midline of the pons, or the midline of the 
um, midbrain, if they are affected, then the corticospinal tract is also affected. Corticospinal tract is also affected. Then medial lemniscus. What is medial lemniscus? Basically, the touch, the position, the vibration, all these sensory receptors send information to in the spinal cord to the dorsal horn. From the dorsal horn, typically to the dorsal horn, from the dorsal horn they will be ascending up as cuneate tract and gracile tract depending on upper limb or lower limb and uh, they typically reach the lower medulla. Once they reach the lower medulla, there they go to the opposite side, right? And while they are traveling opposite side from medulla to pons to the midbrain, that is called medial lemniscus. So medial lemniscus is also a midline structure is what you need to remember. Then you are having the motor nuclei which are midline. Already you know, no? what are they? Third, fourth. Tell me, what are they? Six, very good. Then, twelve. They are the ones which get affected. So, what is medial longitudinal fasciculus? Already we discussed. What is medial longitudinal fasciculus? Very simple. Medial longitudinal fasciculus, kya hota hai? You have to be sure what is medial longitudinal fasciculus. Very simple. Whenever you are looking towards your right, let us say there is a handsome guy or a beautiful girl in the reading room and you are looking towards your right. What's happening? Your right eye is abducting. Your left eye is adducting. So, your adducting eye typically on the left side. Let us say your left eye is adducting and your right eye is abducting. So, on the right side in the pawns, you are having uh, the uh, sixth cranial nerve absence. That makes your right eye, right eye to abduct. Then your left side oculomotor will make your left eye to adduct. So how can the coordination can occur between your adducting uh, left eye and uh, abducting right eye unless the oculomotor on the left, abducens on the right, they both should be connected. And that connecting tract is what? Medial longitudinal fascicle. It is also a midline structure. So, other midbrain, ya pons may, midline may, kuch lesion ho gaya sancho, infarction happened. That is going to affect the medial longitudinal fascicle. And whenever you are trying to adduct one eye, same time if you want a, another eye to abduct, the coordination will be gone. So that is typically called the internuclear ophthalmoplegia is what you have to remember. So four M's which are typically midline lesions. Yeah, medial longitudinal fasciculus get affected in the midline lesions. Motor tract, upper motor neuron get affected in the midline lesions. Medial lemniscus get affected in the midline lesions. And the motor nuclei, third, fourth, sixth, twelfth get affected in the midline lesions is what you have to basically remember. <clears throat> That's right. Akiredi Madhavi. I'm just, I'm just waiting. One student at least should ask. Sir, a medial lemniscus and a... A, this is not uh, motor, no, this is sensory, yeah, a small exception, right, medial lemniscus, yum, yum, yum is a common thing that brought it into the list, but medial lemniscus is actually sensory, absolutely right, very good, so you are all awake, vibrant and listening, I am very happy, now, what is the rule of, can you give me the, yeah, what is the rule of force when it comes to the sensory, Spinothalamic tract is lateral. Any lesion like lateral medullary syndrome of Wellenberg in the medulla that affects the spinothalamic tract. Spinocerebellar tract between the spinal cord and cerebellum. Spinocerebellar tract that is also laterally located. That is the reason you get ataxia 
whenever the lateral medulla is affected. Then the sympathetic chain, yes, for sympathetic chain. That's the reason in the lateral medullary syndrome you get corners because sympathetic chain is passing all the way from hypothalamus descending laterally along the brainstem. Then all sensory cranial nerve nuclei, all the sensory cranial nerve nuclei, just before we discuss now, other than 3, 4, 6, 12, all the remaining cranial nerve nuclei, sensory component is all located laterally in the brainstem. That is how they are all affected, is the rule of 4, which you have to be 100% sure about. So, <clears throat> yes, um, yeah. Now, doc, let us take one example so that you can easily understand, right? <clears throat> so that you can be able to easily understand. Examiner typically gives a question like this in exam hall. 67 year old male patient presents with the 4 hour history of diffuse motor weakness on the left side. Diffuse motor weakness on the left side. He is unable to move his eyes to laterally towards the left side. Which is the best? Which is the best location of the lesion in this given stroke? Is the examiner's question. So, how do you interpret this? Fundamentally, the job of a neurologist is like a carpenter or electrician. He will check all the various points and then come to a conclusion as to where the electrical activity has stopped. Is it the transformer or is it the switchboard or is it the local wire? So, like that. So, doc, first of all, this is a lesion of the brain stem. It is a lesion of the brain stem. That's what you should be sure. Then it is midline in the brain stem. Why midline? Because there is a weakness on his entire left side. That means corticospinal tract is involved. That means it should be a midline where the motor corticospinal tract is involved. Then which side is the weakness? Left side is the weakness. So that is the reason which side must be must be the uh, stroke, it should be on the right side. So, it should be a right sided stroke. Then, he is unable to move his eye laterally towards left. That means, absence counterfeited. So, that is the reason cranial nerve 6 is involved. That means, pons is involved. Where is cranial nerve 6 located? It is located in the pons. So, it is a midline pontine lesion is what you will be able to conclude in the tomorrow's exam. So easy, right? Brainstem, if you know the rule of four, you can be able to interpret.